How's it going everybody? My name is Dave Whipple and you're watching Cheap Wheels. Today we're going to repack a wheel bearing. You buy an older truck like this, the front wheel bearings, they're packed with grease from the factory. Over time that grease will just dry up and dissipate through heat and leaks and whatnot and pretty soon you have dry crusty grease inside your bearings. Today what we're going to do, we're going to take the bearings out of the front hub on this old F-150. We're going to clean them completely out, change the seal on the back of the hub, repack the bearings with fresh grease and put it all back together. Stay tuned. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to clean off anything that's stuck on to that hub and that dust cap. Even though we're going to clean all that old grease out, we don't want to reintroduce dirt. Then you're going to need a screwdriver and a little hammer to tap that dust cap off. Now that we have the cover off, we can see what's inside. You can see there's not a ton of grease to start with, and the grease that's there is very dirty and dry. Well, it's very obvious those bearings need attention, so we're going to get this truck up. We're going to pull off the tire and the brake system. And once we've got the brake caliper off, we can pull that hub off and then get to everything. The inner bearing, the outer bearing, the races if we needed to change the races. Now there's hundreds of different brake systems. This is the kind that uses a little rubber shim with uh, two steel sleeves on the outside. Just kind of wedges in there and gets compressed. Now what we're going to do, we're going to take our parts and clean them up, set them aside as we take them apart. Wow, just look at that grease. It, it looks more like mud. We're going to pull the cotter pin. This cotter pin holds this little cage. Now this is a cage that goes over the nut, keeps the nut from turning. We'll set that aside. Check out this little cage. Kind of lets you uh, set that nut wherever it needs to go. Speaking of nut, wow, that is that is tight. Ooh. That's way more tight than that should be. My goodness. I'm not sure the last time I saw brown grease either. This may have had some rust in it, and after it's been ran a little bit, now it's just like looks like chocolate. There's a washer. Here is the outside bearing. Now this bearing actually is in a plastic cage. Interesting. Well, as you can see, there is basically no grease left inside this cage. You can see every one of those rollers. There's hardly any grease pack in any of that. Not to mention, take a look at the grease that's still inside this hub. It is so dried out, it's actually cracking. There's nothing better we could do for this truck at the moment than to repack these wheel bearings with some good grease. Now once the hub is off, I'm going to clean the grease off the spindle. I'm going to take a little bit more time later on and really get this spindle cleaned back up before we reinstall that hub. This is what we'll need to get this job done. Milk jug, a toothbrush, paper towel, mineral spirits, wheel bearing grease, gloves. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take our milk jug. And we're just gonna cut the bottom off it. So that's gonna be a bearing washing dish. We're just gonna pour some mineral spirits in there. Before we do anything else, we're gonna pop this seal out of the back side of this wheel. Almost impossible to remove that seal without busting it. So we're not gonna be too picky with it. There's that old seal. And then this stuff around the edge, well, it's pretty much black. It does not really appear to be dried out like it was in the front. Time to get her gloves on. I'm going to get everything off this that I can before I stick it in the mineral spirits. Here's another look at that outer one. Now that, that's the way that came out. There's hardly anything for grease in that. Now we've got all those bearings out. Let's clean all of this garbagey old grease out. That race, here, it's it's actually in pretty good shape. It doesn't, it's not obviously damaged in any way. It doesn't have any discoloration. I think we're just going to reuse this race, and I think we're going to do the same with the one on the inside. I want you guys to take a look at this. Now this is just from setting those bearings in this bath of mineral spirits. There's all kinds of all kinds of flex and junk. Let's clean these guys out. It's amazing the particulates that have came off of these wheel bearings. That's not a good sign. 
We're going to clean them up anyways, but just setting them in that bath of mineral spirits, there were so many particles and, and looks like just rust pieces. And that is not good when it comes to bearings. Those rollers are pretty discolored, but I don't see any pitting on them. Once I get these cleaned up real good, I'm going to blow them out with compressed air. I'm not going to spin them. You don't want to do that. But I am going to blow them out. Make sure everything's out that can get out. Set this one right over here. At this point, I've washed the inside of this hub with mineral spirits also and cleaned it out with some parts cleaner. Now I'm just taking this air chuck and I'm just going to clean out any grease bits or anything that's left inside that cage. And then we're going to move on to the spindle. I want to take a bit of time and really clean this spindle up. I want to wash out where that seal is going to sit up against that spindle. Because when we put the new seal on, we, we want that spindle as clean as possible. I need to put on a fresh set of gloves. A set of gloves doesn't have any grease on it, sand particles or anything like that. Because I'm going to pack these bearings. Now this bearing is not great. But uh, I've seen them a lot worse than this. Yourselves a big old dollop of grease. What we want to do is force that grease into the bearing through this little gap here on the outside. So, I'm just going to take it like that and just push that grease up in to those rollers. And then we can bring pack from the outside. It's not going to hurt. Pack from the top. Just get that bearing just as loaded full as we can. Let's load that bearing into our hub. It's the back side. Now I'm going to put my new seal on. This would be a good place to have a seal driving kit, but I don't have one handy. So I'm just going to go around and get this seal set in and then just tap it in lightly with this hammer all the way around until I can hear that it's seated properly. Now that I've got that new seal all tapped in there, I'm gonna take one of these used rubber gloves, I'm gonna take my grease, and I am just going to pack underneath that seal, kind of fill in all that gap best I can. So when this sucker goes on there, it's got grease. I'm gonna also go over here to my spindle, lob the grease on that spindle. Let's pack the front one. Another way you can pack it is just keep packing that groove. Just keep stuffing the, the grease in that groove. It's about the same principle as packing it on the palm of your hand. Flip this thing upside down and pack that groove too. Just keep packing it full. There's only three ways to get grease into a wheel bearing. You have to use that gap on the top of the bearing or the gap on the bottom of the bearing or the, the little slots in the side. And of course, little holes in the side, they're not going to let a ton of grease through. So you pack it from the top and you pack it from the bottom through that gap. So I got the hub on, I got the bearing back in the hub to put this washer on, put on the nut. Now how torquing this works, torque it down to 22, 25 foot-pounds and then you back it off and retorque it down to 10 to 15 inch-pounds. Now due to the fact that this is an antique truck and we're just reusing parts, what we're going to do here is we're just going to kind of do this without a torque wrench. We're going to snug that nut up and as we snug that nut, we're going to turn the hub to make sure that those bearings are seated well on the races. What you want is you want to make sure the bearings are seated up against the races and that the nut has just a little bit more tension than you could put on with your fingers. We want that hub to spin freely, but that nut not to be loose. Now we're going to take our nut cage and adjust the nut until we can line up a hole through the nut cage through the end of the spindle. And we're going to place a new cotter pin in there. What this will do is it will hold that nut in the exact place that we chose to set it. 
cleaned out the dust cap, packed some fresh grease in there, and we're just going to cap that back on. Now the dust cap doesn't need any grease, but if you have a little grease in there and you go to check this later on down the road, you can kind of repack the outside of the bearing nice. with the grease in the cap. Now I'm going to take and clean all of this grease off of here, because all it's going to do is collect dirt. Now I'm going to put on one last rubber glove. What we need to do is we need to clean off that rotor. So all that grease that we had on our hands and we touched the rotor and no matter how clean you think you are, you don't want grease on that rotor because it'll contaminate the brake pads and the brakes will squeal or they won't work quite right. And we're just going to take our brake clean. We're going to hit our, hit our rotor there and we're just going to wipe down that disc. We're going to do the same thing on the back side although you can't see it. And then we'll take a fresh piece of paper towel. We'll get all that cleaned off back there too. From here we're going to reinstall our brake system and at that point we're pretty much set. Now this video is about repacking wheel bearings so I went through the whole process and cleaned up those nasty old bearings but honestly I probably should have just changed them. For 25, 30 bucks, I probably could have got the races and bearings. I just didn't have any of the parts, or I would have just switched what I was planning to do and titled the video Replacing Wheel Bearings and Races. I did repack them, like you saw. I did put them back in the truck. I am running them, but that hub still gets pretty hot, and I'm still getting, you know, noise over 55 miles an hour. It's kind of getting that howling sound. I don't think they're very happy. So eventually I will replace them. But hope you guys have enjoyed the process, what it looks like to clean out a set of bearings and repack them. They're gonna last until I get around to changing them, if I do, when I do. Thank you guys so much for watching Cheap Wheels. My name's Dave Whipple. Keep your junk on the road.